If you're visiting Denver and you want to make sure your trip doesn't suck, I'm here to help. What's going on YouTube? I'm Dave and I'm here to help you plan your trip to Denver by letting you know about some very common mistakes that people make before they come here to visit. If you're new to my channel, I help locals and visitors find places to eat and things to do in and around Denver. And this video is especially for you guys who are coming to Denver to visit because I just really want you to have a great time while you're here. I promise these things won't be obscure. They'll actually be helpful and they might even save your trip. Of course, if you live in Denver and you're just watching this video for fun, you can add your hot takes to the comments to help our lovely visitors out. We all know that no one likes a long intro to nowhere, so let's just jump right into this video. First up, do not stay by the airport, nor let your opinion of Denver be influenced by your drive into the city from the airport. Why? One big reason is that the airport is this far away from Denver, and also as of 2022, there's very, very little near the airport. It's just not the place that you're going to want to stay if you're coming here to visit. The airport is about a 40 minute drive to downtown Denver, and that that means you'd have to do that drive over and over again, which isn't that fun if you're coming to hang out with friends or check out the city. One of the only exceptions to this would be if you're staying in the Gaylord Rockies Hotel, which is close to the airport, but chances are if you're staying there, you're either there for like a conference, a work thing, or coming with your family to do a family friendly hangout in the hotel kind of thing. If you're staying at Gaylord Rockies, you kind of know what you're coming for. There are absolutely some cities where you're pretty much in the mix as soon as you leave the airport. Denver is not one of those cities. The airport used to be closer to the city. Now it's further out there and it's going to feel that way. I just want to set your expectations because that area out by the airport is super flat. It kind of looks like Kansas. You might have a lot of regrets that you spent a ton of money to end up in a cow town. It gets better as you get closer to the city, I promise. Okay, next, if you're into trying different food while you're traveling, I would highly recommend not getting caught up in the more touristy side of Denver's food scene if you really wanna know what the food here is like. When a lot of people come to Denver, they do a bunch of Googling and they end up at a lot more of the classic type spots. So I'm talking about places like the Buckhorn Exchange and the Fort. These places have been around for a long time. They certainly have their old school kind of Western charms with game meat and stuff like that but that is not all the Denver food scene is about. And if you wanna do a meal at either of these places just to know that you did, I'm absolutely not going to blame you. I do stuff like that when I travel too. That being said, Denver's food scene has gotten a lot more interesting recently, and I think that there's better food to be had in other parts of the city. We've got places like the Greenwich, Kike's Red Tacos, Uchi, Tamaki Den. There's just so much more to Denver's food scene than game meats and breweries, and I think that it's worth checking out. I recently made a new video on the best restaurants in Denver that I'll link to in the description so you can check it out if you're interested in trying out a bunch of different food while you're here. Here's that part of the video where I ask if you can give it a like if you're into it so far. Also, if you're a small business owner like we are, I wanted to let you know about Melio, a company based right here in Denver that makes it easier for businesses to pay and get paid online. Melio makes it super easy to send business payments for free. We've used it for things like sending in security deposits and paying vendors, and it's really Really, really easy. Some banks like to charge you a fee to send a payment just because you're a business and Melio makes this a whole lot easier. I'll add a link to the description if you're interested in checking it out. Now back to the video. As much as I wish I could say that you could go completely car free while you're in Denver, I do think that it's a mistake to plan your trip around being carless. Depending on where you're staying, you could Uber and Lyft around to a good number of spots in Denver or you might want to just rent a car which will give you a lot more freedom and flexibility as you're going around the city. Personally, I would recommend having a rental car in Denver unless your hotel charges insane parking fees. And I know that some people just don't like to think about driving while they're traveling, and I fully respect that. If you saw that Denver has a train that goes all the way out to the airport and got really excited, you are right, but it is more of a light rail commuter train than it is like a New York City subway system. We are one of those cities where everything is roughly 20 minutes apart. So while there are walkable areas in Denver, the different areas are not that easy to get to on foot. Just to show you what this is like, and you probably wouldn't realistically do this, but let's say you wanted to go to City Park and Wash Park on the same day because you really wanted to check out two of Denver's most popular parks 
it'd be about a five mile walk between the two destinations and it's not a walk that you'd really want to do. Or let's say you wanted to do kind of like a bizarre art stay where you started at Meow Wolf and ended up at the Denver Center for Performing Arts, two places that most people in Denver would say are pretty close to each other. It'd be about a mile walk in between the two places. So it's not impossible by any means, but when you zoom out on the map and you see where something like Cherry Creek or Rhino is, you can see that the distance between different neighborhoods in Denver will start to become a problem if you're carless or you just don't want to take a Lyft or Uber. You'll just get a lot more out of your trip if you plan to either have a car or use cars to get around the city. On that note, I put this in one of my other videos, but while you're out here, turn off tolls on your navigation app if you're driving. A lot of people come to Denver for the first time and they leave talking about how expensive the tolls are when in reality, most people who live here rarely, if ever, use the toll roads or express lanes. A lot of the times, these toll roads and express lanes are not that much faster and they can get pretty expensive, which is why people who live here don't actually take them. Even worse, sometimes your navigation app will take you on some really odd routes to get to the toll road to save you like three or four minutes, and that will make it even more difficult for you to orient yourself in a city that you don't really know. That's it for this one. It's super simple. Just turn off tolls in your navigation app unless you're in a super emergency and you got to hustle out to the airport or there's crazy traffic somewhere. Next, I know that some people might consider this a hot take, but I don't think that you should go out to Red Rocks Amphitheater unless you're planning on seeing something there like a concert or doing something like going on a hike. I do think that this is one of the best concert venues in the United States. Some people even consider it a bucket list concert venue, and I would agree, it's super nice, but it's best experience if you're actually taking in a show there and just getting the whole experience. When you're there for a concert, it's freaking magic. I go to at least one concert there every single year, and I don't regret it ever. And one of the main reasons why I don't think that people should go to Red Rocks just to check out the venue and do nothing else is because Denver is here, and Red Rocks is all the way over here. It's about a 30 to 40 minute drive depending on what part of Denver you're staying in. If you do want to go all the way out there to check out the benches, stairs, and the view, and the view is nice, you would want to make it really worth your time because it's a good drive to go out there and especially if you Uber or Lyft all the way out to Red Rocks during the daytime, it can be very hard to get a ride back to the city when there's no concert or event going on because no driver wants to just hang out out there for no reason. If you're going to walk around on the grounds for a laid back morning hike and take in the views and hang out for a while, great. If you signed up for something like yoga on the rocks or fitness on the rocks, they do like exercise classes there in the morning in the summertime, also an awesome reason to go. Of course, if you bought concert tickets to line up with your trip to Denver, that's absolutely a great reason to go. But if you're just gonna walk on the benches and look at an empty stage and head home, I'm just not sure if it's worth taking that much time out of your trip to go there. Okay, this one might seem silly, but a lot of people get things to do in Colorado confused with things to do in Denver. I think that most people who do this come from bigger cities because they're used to things being pretty close together. For example, the Manitou Incline and Garden of the Gods, it's about 90 minutes south. Vail is roughly two hours away. Aspen is even further. Rocky Mountain National Park, also about two hours away. Maroon Bells, roughly four hours away. Boulder, totally doable from Denver. And there are good reasons to go to all of these places, but a lot of people who come to Denver to visit kind of forget that Colorado is still a big ass square. So they want to do all of these things during their trip, but then they quickly realize that things are a little further apart than they expected and that maybe they should break up their trip a little bit depending on where they want to go. The Denver area itself, totally manageable. You can knock out a ton of neighborhoods and have a great time in the city. But if you want to see other areas of Colorado while you're out here, spend some time with Google Maps before you leave so you can make the most of your time in Colorado. Okay, so that's what I got and I hope that this video helps you avoid some very common mistakes that people make when they come to Denver to visit. No matter what, I hope that you have a great trip here and I'll kind of surround myself with a bunch of different videos 
that I've made about Denver that will hopefully help you plan your trip more efficiently and help you find things that you otherwise wouldn't have known about. Of course, if you haven't already, please give this video a like if you learned anything from this video. I appreciate those likes very much. Thanks so much for checking out this video and I hope you have an awesome time in Denver.